speaker tonight is a U of M physics PhD student by day and a bicycle enthusiast by night. And day, sorry. Uh, please welcome Benjamin Fultz. All right, so if you've been pegged by the bike person, by any of your friends, then you're very used to this conversation where you're being held accountable for this guy and all his baggage and repentant for the sins of every cyclist who's ever gone through a stoplight. <laughs> this is really a terrible situation because riding bikes is awesome. You can do sweet tricks, you can go camping, you can ride as fast as you can, you can ride with your family, and you can use your bike as a tool to, to get around town. And cycling for transit is, is something I really love. And there's all sorts of great reasons, right? More, more statistics than I'm willing to believe about what a great economic choice it is, what a great environmental choice it is, and how great it is for, for your own health. But for me, you know, I really like to connect with the parrots and the dogs and the people that I get to ride bikes with. <laughs> and so if, if cycling is so great, then why are we not riding? Why, why am I here instead of going riding around? Well, it's dangerous, right? There are potholes, there are cars, which are safe for the drivers, but nobody else. It can be difficult. And you know, a lot of these challenges keep people from riding their bikes. And Ann Arbor has an awesome set of cycling nonprofits um, and bike shops who are really, <coughs> you know, on the side of, of getting people riding bikes, whether it's lobbying for bike lanes or shared youth, youth, shared youth paths, or, you know, organizing group rides, which are, a, you know, a safe place to ride. Um, but what happens when people get their bike out of the garage and they ride around the, ride around the block and they get a flat tire? Or they, you know, slip their chain? Well, it can be a real setback. And, you know, some people will go home and they'll look up the, the spec sheet for their bike and, you know, then, oh, God, what is this? You know, they, they get their dipstick tangled in their gooseneck, and they're, they're worse off than when they started. And then you, then you have a person who's just not riding a bicycle. And that's not what we want. And so this, this was the problem that made us start Common Cycle, right? So Common Cycle is an organization that you can go to when you're in bicycle distress. And we have volunteers who will, will help you work on your bike and, and teach you how to do repairs using our tools. And then you'll ride away a happy puppy dog you know, and, and hopefully you love us so much that you'll come back and, and pass on what you learn. So it's, it's this organization that's, that's sharing knowledge, but then also the tools to act on that knowledge so you can fix your bike and keep riding. And, you know, bicycle repairs is a great, great thing to do this with because you don't really need many tools to fix a bike. You know, you can get, you can get by with, with Allen wrenches for most stuff, but then there's also, you know, these fancy pants bike tools that make no sense for an individual mechanic to own, you know, if you're just, you might need them once per bike lifetime, but they're a great resource to share. And so we've, we did some fundraising a few years ago and, and bought a bunch of nice stands, a bunch of nice tools, and we've been setting up our mobile repair stand, which is a space that welcomes any bicycle rider with any sort of bicycle. And will we'll help you figure out, you know, if you have any problems with your bicycle, and then walk you through the repair where you, you'll be the one actually getting your hands dirty and doing the bicycle repair, so you, so you get to learn. And to a lot of people, they, you know, they'll see our mobile repair stand and they'll say, ah, that's a place where I can go and get my bike fixed for free. But that's not what Common Cycle is. <laughs> it's a place to learn. And that makes it better than a place where you can go and get your bike fixed for free. From a volunteer's perspective, it's much more meaningful to help somebody, you know, learn and teach, you know, they don't get much out of, of just watching you do the repair. And you know, if you're visiting Common Cycle, you want to be empowered by and, and take away some knowledge that the next time you have this problem, instead of you know, waiting around to go to the bike shop, you can just fix it and keep on riding. And so this is the thing that we're really enthusiastic about and will make us stand outside in the cold and the rain to help you learn how to loop your chain. <laughs> and so how, how have we done this? Well, for the past four years, we've been the, the homeless bicycle repair ninjas of Ann Arbor. And we have uh, a couple of bike trailers that we can put our tents and our carts and our, our tools on and ride around town, you know, and we'll be ready to go basically anywhere in town in about a half hour. And Cary Town has been a great host for us and we've been setting up there weekly over the, the fair weather months and with a very limited set of resources, we've, we've helped fix a thousand bikes and helped educate a thousand bicycle riders. and that. You know, that's great. We get to you know, keep people riding their bikes. And so how do, you, how do you grow an organization like this? You know, you don't want to make this big monolithic thing that is too much for volunteers to run. So you divide instead. And so we butted off for the first time this summer and uh, launched the B3 Bike Lab with some help from the Ann Arbor Bicycle Touring Society. And this here is Hassan, who is uh, one of our pupils. And at the summer, he really loved how bike grease smelled. 
and at the end of the summer he was repacking his own headset, which was a really great success. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in volunteering or, you know, just the next time you're in bicycle distress, check us out. Thanks.